Bingo. Hey there, folks. This is Ian. I'm an artist at Bingo, and today we're going to be using Graphic Scale to make a simple walk cycle for use in Scratch. I'm setting up my palette with a 32 by 32 8 bit canvas like I usually do, and I'm going to quickly use some black line to sketch out the outline of a mouse character. Using the right click function, I can highlight the mouse and shift it into the center of the frame. I'll do this again later once I have the entire frame completed. Quickly saving my outline, I'm going to start setting up a palette for coloring my mouse. I'm using the palette sliders in the palette panel to select a base tone and then selecting two highlight and two shadow tones. That's going to be for the main gray of my mouse and then I'm going to choose my accent colors, choose a base tone and at least one highlight and one shadow tone. Once I've filled in the main flat colors, I'll take my highlight and shadow tones and just give a bit of form to those shapes. At this point, I'm also doing some anti-aliasing where those colors meet. Just to recap, anti-aliasing is a technique that pixel artists use to reduce the contrast between two adjacent pixels. Choosing an intermediate tone will place those pixels in places where the contrast between two adjacent pixels is too strong to soften that contrast and make things appear more curved or blend into one another more nicely. I'm also using some selective outlining, replacing that stark black outline around the sprite with colors that are found inside of the sprite. This also helps inform the direction of the light source coming from my top left. Once my sprite is complete, I'll erase my helper palette that I've drawn on the canvas itself. And just go back in and tweak some little bits of line that are not quite right. I'm using my preview window on the right hand side to see what the sprite is going to look like at 200 times its size. Once my base frame is complete, I'm going to go up to my frame tools and duplicate my frame. pop-up will come up. I'll just click OK for now with the default settings. And now I have two frames. Because this is a very simple walk cycle, I'm going to stick to four frames. I'm going to have an idle frame that I'm going to repeat twice. And then I'm going to have a left leg forward and right leg forward frame. So now I have four frames. I'm going to select my second frame and start editing the position of my mouse right parts. Right clicking and dragging a selection, I can shift the head down and forward slightly. Once I'm happy with the position, I can right click to set it in place. right-clicking and selecting the ears, I'm going to have them remain up slightly. And then I can fill in the gap that is left. I can use the toggle buttons for frame forward and frame backwards up at the top bar to compare the idle frame with my motion frame. Selecting the properties, I can choose all frames and edit the properties for those frames. I'm going to select a background color to make transparent. I can change the view. Select the white in the background. It's now transparent in the final file. 
I'm going to change the timing for the framing and adjust the frame delay. I can see the speed in the preview window. Remember when you're making a walk cycle that for a proper gait, the forward arm has to be opposite the forward leg to remain balanced. Once my frame is selected, I'm going to highlight the position of the head and I'm going to copy it and paste it into the fourth frame so the second and fourth frame have the same head position. Right click to set it in place. And I'm going to touch up the pixels that were left there by the previous position. Again, I can toggle forward and backward in the frame view to see the position of the head in the idle frame versus the movement frame. I'm going to slightly touch up the position of those ears. And now I'm drawing the arms and legs in reverse position from frame 2. You'll notice to maintain the illusion of some depth in the sprite, I'm using darker colors on the rear leg and, and arm versus the one that is closer to the viewer. After tweaking and testing my sprite, when I'm happy with the motion that I have, I'm going to resize it because 32 by 32 is going to be a little bit small inside of Scratch. So I'm going to go to All Frames, Resample. I'm going to change my size to 128 by 128 pixels. Uncheck Smooth and click OK. And now it's made a much larger sprite. Now I'm going to save it as an animated GIF. GIF is a file for animated sprites that is supported by Scratch. I'm going to choose GIF from the drop down menu for file type, and I'm not going to check any of the looping options. It's already set to loop infinitely. And then I'm going to close down graphics. Here we are in Scratch. We're going to delete the base cat sprite, and we're going to upload a sprite. Find the location where we saved the mouse sprite and add it in. And here he is. He looks a little large, so I'm going to set him down to 50% his size. I actually wanted a 64 by 64 sprite. One of the nice things about Scratch is that when you import in an animated GIF, it will automatically arrange all of the frames in that GIF as separate costumes for that sprite. Costumes are how you maintain frames inside of Scratch. So to set it up, we're going to get a when green flag clicked and then inside of forever loop, we're going to put our frame delay timing and then move to next costume. So when your game starts running, your mouse starts running. 
So that's how you can take an animated GIF from Graphic Scale and integrate it into Scratch. So go ahead and give it a shot, make your own sprites in Graphic Scale, bring them into Scratch, and make your own game. And until next time, keep drawing.